Welcome everybody. This is the sixth installment of On the Engine and today we're going to be interviewing uh, Dylan Zitzer. He is the cross-country coach for University of Montana Western. He is also a Beaverhead County graduate, uh, two-time state champion. One time. Four. One. We, uh, we, got, we got second place my junior year. Okay. So, still, so yeah. Your senior year, you were state champion. Went Our on. team was. Our team was, yep. Team. And then you uh, went on to Concordia. Yep. Also <laughs> had a very successful yep. career with them. Yep. Yep. Three national appearances for our team and top ten one year. So, yeah. yeah. That was good. You're back here in Dillon uh, coaching the cross-country team. How does it feel to be back in your hometown doing this? Oh, it's been uh, super special, and I feel just really grateful and lucky to be here and uh, get to share the community of Dillon with, uh, you know, a bunch of athletes and um, show them the area. It's Yeah, it's been really special. You know, we ran up to Gorge Lakes today, and um, for some kids to get to see something like that, you know, it can be life-changing. So oh, yeah. it's been pretty cool. Your team this year, you've got on the women's side, You've got three seniors. Three seniors, yep. And Erin uh, O'Connor, she's your... Yeah, she's uh, my star coming back again this year. Um, you know, I've never had a repeat All-American, so that's really the big goal for us. And uh, so far what I've seen, she's better this year than she was last year. Well, that's awesome. You expect a lot of leadership out of your seniors, so... Yes. Yep, uh, it's, a, it's a totally new situation this year having three really strong seniors and just a ton of personality in that group. So um, my optimism is really high because we're in a situation with leadership that we've just never had, which is really, really cool. That is a good deal. On the men's side, uh, you're pretty young. You have a yep. lot of juniors. I don't, there isn't a senior on. No seniors. No yep. seniors. Uh, no seniors, yep. No, uh, no it's, uh, I'm really optimistic. I don't know this year how competitive we'll be. Um, I've got three young freshman guys that are all really talented athletes, and it's just going to be a matter of them figuring it out. And, uh, you know, we, we added really well to the roster this year. And, um, you know, the young guys that I have coming back, uh, Luke Lutz and Matt Wilson, are both really great kids, and they have a lot of leadership. Um, and so this year for us is really about setting the stage for next year and hopefully having that breakthrough um, like we did for the women's team and getting the team to the national B meet. So, Dylan, you got to start, um, you were one of the starting coaches right. of this program. You're the first to coach them yep. um, competitively. What was it like, what were some of the challenges as you built this program from that first group of, you know, all, all freshmen? You know, the biggest challenge that first year was not having any leadership outside of myself. And, um, you know, those other college coaches, you know that the time that happens outside of practice is equally as important as what happens in practice. And... Um, really trying to help them through that as much as possible um, just because nobody had been a college runner at the time and you know it took a lot of reflection from myself on what I was like as an 18 year old which is really hard um, but we got really lucky with that group of kids that there were some really good kids and they figured it out fairly quickly and um, it was way more about the the non-practice time than the practice time that first year so what is the biggest transition and, and challenge as you, as you get an 18-year-old who's coming from a short high school cross-country season into a very different setup for collegiate competition? Yeah, I think it's the same thing as what I just said is that non-practice time. And, you know, some of these kids come from a really structured high school environment and, you know, maybe they have four or five coaches and they're getting a lot of attention and, um, you know, their day is very uh, structured out and, you know, for them, you know, they're lucky if they have five hours of structured time a day, whether that be three hours of class and two hours of practice. So figuring out how to spend that 19 hours a day in a positive way, um, you know, I think that's just, uh, it's challenging for everybody and there's no one right answer. So trying to figure out what that answer is for each individual is really important. A lot of our viewers are more familiar with team sports. Right. Uh, so they might have uh, less idea of, of what are the characteristics you're looking for when you're recruiting a, an athlete, what makes a great collegiate cross country or track athlete? You have to be a self-starter and you really have to work hard. Uh, you know, I tell all my athletes, there's not, it's not glamorous. Um, it's, uh, you have to be willing to go out there and put in hard work regardless of the conditions. And, um, you know, you really have to have a stomach just to, to get the work done because at a certain degree, it's just a lot of work. 
and uh, as much as you might enjoy it, you're still going to have days where it's uh, you're punching in your time and getting it taken care of. And um, yeah, that's that's the number one thing probably. So. What, uh, what is one of your team's favorite workouts? What are the, the type of workouts they seem to look forward to? Uh, you know, definitely like going up to camp and running to say Gorge or Tendoy or something. That's, you know, that's really special for those guys. And it's, there's just no way to make it easy. So I think that's one of the things that we really like. I think the team dynamic right now, they really like the long run because it's similar to that, uh, you know, and that's, it really just depends on the leadership of the team. You know, I wouldn't say I personally have a f favorite workout. It's just certain days are a check mark day. And last year, I would say that was the long run for us. So, so again, not a lot of our, our viewers have maybe made it to one of your home meets. Right. You've had two. Yep. Uh, I know you've got another plan for yep. this year. Uh, because it is harder to maybe generate excitement because there isn't yeah. a big spectator event, yeah. how do you develop support for your program and engage that? Yeah, I think we, we've tried to have more community outreach through the Montana Run, Running Company and, um, you know, just make people aware of what we're doing. And, uh, you know, I always get cracked up because people say, oh, I see your team out running all the time. And I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. We run. You should be seeing them. <laughs> if you're not seeing them, we're, we're, we really have a problem. So. Um, you know, for me, it's just connecting with people in the community and, uh, you know, letting them in on, you know, what we do. And uh, to a lot of people, 10 mile run, that sounds crazy, but that's kind of a regular day for us. And um, helping people understand the type of work that we do is really important to me so they can put it into context. So yeah. the Montana Running Company, it's a, a group that you have yeah. to organize. Is that, um, has that made a difference kind of in involvement with your your sport do you think yeah sport? absolutely i think especially on like at the university level you know we've got uh professors and um, people within that community that have been part of our events and uh, again it makes it more approachable and then they can contextualize what we do and um, yeah it's been it's been really cool to see a little bit more of that outreach happen so your meets all look a little bit different, and that yes. might be something that's unfamiliar as well. It's not like a football game where you go play yeah. four quarters right. on the same size field every time. So how? what are the adjustments that you have to make week to week for those events? Uh, I guess it would be like baseball, right? You play to the park. You know, you build the roster around the park, I think. I'm a little out of my depth there. But, uh, you know, we really try to hone in on what our championship events are. Um, and really build things from what those championship events look like. Last year we were in Vancouver, Washington, and um, I have a ton of familiarity with that course. I raced on it twice. Um, we had a team there, or we had some individuals there two years ago, and I know it's a really soft, soggy, hilly, spongy course, and so we did almost all of our workouts on grass. We did a lot behind the middle school, and just to make sure we were used to that surface. And um, during the season, I would say I don't do a ton to specifically uh, prepare them for each meet. I think it's really important to let them figure some of that stuff out on their own. And then when we get to our championship type of events, um, a lot of the learning has been done and then I can um, push them into the right direction, if you will. So what are the distances that your teams race during the year? What are the so uh, 8K for the men for cross country, which is 4.97 miles, pretty much five miles. And then the women run 5K, which is 3.1 miles. Looking forward to this fall season, what kind of changes have been created through COVID? What kind of challenges are you working with? As you know, so first off, I just want to say we're super lucky because we're having a fall season. We're not just practicing, which is really amazing. And uh, we pretty much have just a four meet conference schedule. I think there'll be some other teams there, but normally we would have a five meet schedule, probably travel out of state, hopefully compete against some ranked teams just to build up some equity at the national level. But this year it's just going to be, you know, staying at home and uh, running against our conference competition mostly. Now your athletes in cross country, many, if not all, of them yep. also run indoor and outdoor season. Yes. yes. What are the events that they transition to during those? Uh, so it's 800 meters up to 10,000 meters potentially. I haven't had anyone run a 10,000 uh, yet, but uh, it's very similar to cross country. I do have some people that are more middle distance oriented, whether that be the 800 or the 1500 outdoors. Um, but for me, everybody is a three sport athlete. You know, I, I've had kids that maybe didn't compete in indoor, but they were training with us the whole time. And, um, you know, for me, it's just important to make sure I'm putting kids in positive uh, situations. So. so you've built this up over six years? Yes, this will be six year six, six for cross country. So where are you hoping to go in the next four? I mean, when we get to year 10 of Bulldog 
West Country, track and field, what's it going to look like? You know, um, getting to see what Coach Woolley did uh, two years ago really opened my eyes to what's possible. And um, even this last season, you know, we only finished 25th in the nation. And, um, you know, we're super lucky. We've had a couple of really good athletes come through Western. And just getting to see what Mindy was able to accomplish and Aaron, what she was able to accomplish. And um, the possibilities are really out there. So I don't want to say we're going to be national champions, but I definitely think the potential for us to be a top four, or to be a trophy team, um, on the women's side, like I understand the recruiting and the athletes are out there. So um, it's possible. It's a, it's a big ask to get that many good recruits. I, I'm sure Coach Willie would say the same thing, but uh, it is possible on the men's side. I just want to get us to the point where we're a top 15 team. Um, you know, pretty much my goal coming into Western was to get both of the teams where we were a top 15, top 10 type team every year because I know that that's possible. Um, there's certainly a lot of hurdles to be had, but you know, that's always been my hope um, since I started at Western. Where do you see uh, track expanding in the next few years as you're the head coach of both? Yeah, there's there's a real hope that we'll continue to work towards a full team um, and be competitive for a Frontier Conference title just because we did officially add a Frontier Conference track meet um, for, for this spring, actually. So um, I think there's a real hope to add a second coach and um, yeah, build out those events and whether that's working with football or basketball or volleyball to get a few more athletes out there I don't know yet, but you know, we're really optimistic and I think right now with Carroll really being the only real program in the frontier There's a lot of opportunity there and it's just a really positive thing for the kids because those kids on my cross-country roster that are the say third fourth fifth to eighth kids, you know, they really need those sorts of meets and uh, you know, it's another opportunity to get all conference or close out your year. And um, I think it's just going to be really positive for a whole conference and really positive for, for my athletes. And uh, there's so much talent out there for track in Montana, especially in the throwing events. It's, you know, I'd really love to see those events get some, because I get, you know, kids information all the time. I have kids reach out to me all the time. And, you know, there's not that many states that say do the javelin. I mean, there's 15 kids probably in the state of Montana that are top ranked javelin throwers every year so that are already throwing I'd say pretty close to the national standard which for distance running is like impossible to get those kids so um, I think if we can get a good coach in there and um, get some of those athletes we could be really competitive because Carroll's really the only team doing that right now Rocky and Great Falls are kind of messing around with some stuff but they're not full teams either and we're still waiting on Northern and who knows what Tech's doing so Never heard of a double zero year, but that's what they did. So we'll see. Thank you guys so much. It's, it's meant a ton to me to get the support and have a scholarship and um, makes me feel like I'm on equal footing with everybody else. And that's all I can really hope for. So thanks, you guys. You know, we're not going to be here forever and you want to leave it better than you found it.